The opening hymn of praise is Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Today we remember your faithfulness. Thank you for letting us walk with you each day. We know that you are with us in each and every moment. We thank you for fulfilling your promises and inspiring us with your goodness. In this moment, we come before you and lay our lives at your feet. May we continue to worship you with every fiber of our being. May we always praise you and come to know you better. Today, as we join together in worship, may we sing with, with all of the angels of heaven of your greatness and wonder. Lord, we adore you. Lord, we love you. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. 
The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will. But born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory. The glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. Amen. Let us bow down and pray. Gracious and loving God, you are the beginning and the end. You are our creator and the sovereign of our life. Receive our worship and pour grace and mercy on our, each family and each one of us. Lord, we are so weak and we are so foolish so that we often forget that the whole world belongs to you. All creatures change in its season and obey God's order, but we did not. Forgive our pride, greed, and ignorance. Through all its changing, let us know that God is alive, God is here and now, and God is still working for us. We pray for the world. Keep us under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertain and dis distress. Please be close to those who are ill, afraid or in isolation. Be their consolation, be their hope, and be their light. Protect medical staff, governors, and essential workers. Bless them and strengthen with you with the Holy Spirit. Be with us, Lord, our home and family, our schools and children, and elders, all in any kind of need or sorrow. Almighty God, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of resurrected Jesus, please come into our heart and give comfort and strength. Open our eyes as you did Jesus' disciples to the reality and truth of the resurrection. Lord, give mercy on us. Just as Jesus met the disciples who were in sadness and frustration, and give them new strength to go and tell the world, to make disciples and to baptize the people. Please come to us and grant us new strength, wisdom, power, and comfort. So let us shine light of Jesus Christ through our life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Our Father, Father who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Today's Bible scripture taken from Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verse 39 through 41. Mark 4, 39 to 41. And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great, joy, great fear and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the word of living God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Last Wednesday was the fifth anniversary of Earth Day. We knew why carrying our plan planet is important. The Earth is where we live. The earth provides many things for our lives, and the earth is alive too. Plants, animals, and humans are living together on earth. We are all linked. Most of all, the earth is creation, God's creation. God created the heaven and the earth. We take benefit from the earth, and we are as God's church have a duty to protect the God's word. This day, we are in the midst of the hard times. Though we do not know the exact reason for the virus outbreak, we can see that when people stopped, the earth and its creature began to recover. For example, dolphins and swans returned to the Venice, Italy. There was a less dust in India, allowing to the Himalaya to appear again. God's creation is being restored. We hope that the virus will disappear soon and our daily life will be restored and returned, and that God's creation will be restored to a more beautiful world. We are still young and it may seem like there is not much we can do, but there are little things that we can do to keep the world God made beautiful. Today's scripture showed us who the Lord of all creation is. As we know, Jesus performed many miracles, so people followed Jesus. They wanted to be healed or listen to him. One day, Jesus and his disciples stepped into a boat to cross the sea. Suddenly, a great storm came upon them. Waves crushed onto a boat. It was a very dangerous and scary situation. What was Peter's shop? Do you remember? Mark verse 116 says, 
He saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Many of, disciples of, many of the disciples were fishermen. They knew the sea very well, and they that this storm was very serious. There is something very interesting in Mark 4.38. But he was in the stern asleep on the cushion. What was Jesus doing while this huge storm beat away the boat? Jesus was asleep. Disciples who knew all about the sea were afraid, but Jesus was asleep through it all. Disciples awoke him and said, Save us, we are going down. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Jesus got up and rebuked the wind. He said to the sea, Peace, be still. The storm stopped and the sea became calm, smooth, and peaceful. Jesus ruled over the wind on the sea and he can rule over the storm of our lives. Jesus said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no fear? Jesus, tur Jesus turned water into wine, fed 5,000 people with five bread and two fish. He made blind see, lame work, and even raised Nazareth from the dead. Jesus healed people fed them, and taught them. The disciples were with Jesus all of these times, but they did not realize how great Jesus is. This is a way for Jesus to show his disciples that he was God. He is the creator and is in control, all of things. A stone was nothing to Jesus. He just spoke and it obeyed. Even fishermen could not control the great storm, but Jesus was able to calm it. Mark 4.41 said, They were filled with great fear and said to one another, who then, is he, who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Who is Jesus? Why do the wind and sea obey him? How can Jesus perform so many miracles? Because he is God. He is our God who created the whole world. Jesus, as the creator, had completely control over his creation. When we are in the middle of a storm, in the face of fear, and in difficult moment of our life, we should put Jesus first. Jesus is the Lord of heaven and earth, the Lord of wind and the waves, and he should be the Lord of our lives. Trust Jesus, who is, in our, who is our God. Believe in Jesus Christ. He is in control. Just as Jesus saved his disciples from the storm, Jesus can save us from these hardship. Jesus save us from sin by God's power and love. Trust and obey him. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for your wonderful creation, steadfast love, and your wondrous work for us. All creation and us that belong to you. Let us trust you completely and obey your word more and more. Forgive us for our lack of faith and help us follow Jesus Christ, the Lord of all creation. We are weak, but the Lord is strong. We rely on you, and we love you, Lord. May your goodness and kindness help us and protect us from the storm of our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Let us confess our faith by the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hands of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to church, the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today's Bible scripture is taken from Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verse 13 through 27. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking with each other about these things that happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, are you the one visited to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, what things? And they said to him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how chief priest and ruler delivered him up, be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hope that he was one, the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and beside all this, it is now the thir third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses, all the prophets, he interpreted to them all in all the scripture the things concerning himself. This is the word of living God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Okay. Please pray with me. Gracious God, illuminate your word and draw us into a deeper, stronger faith and build up our relationship with you and each other as your word is proclaimed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A Christian writer, Philip Yancey, wrote a book which he titled Disappointment with God, in which he addresses three questions. Uh, is God unfair? Is God silent? And is God hidden? Because there are times in our lives uh, when we lose a loved one that we feel, we feel God has been unfair uh, in allowing them to die that God is silent about why they died, and God is hidden from hearing their prayers. Is God unfair? Is God silent? And is God hidden? I'm sure some people are asking these questions uh, upon the death of their loved ones during this time of crisis. Uh, Christians are no exception. When tragedy happens, contrary to our expectations, these, uh, those are times when we are tempted to doubt God's word, lose faith, and as a result, lose sight of God's presence. The Bible tells that we live by faith, not by sight. But there are times when we live by sight rather than faith. 
Uh, Charles uh, de Foucault was a French monk who lived in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. And Foucault once said, what do you think is the hardest part about being a Christian? What do you think is the hardest part about being a Christian? When I first read this question, I, um, I thought of words such as making sacrifices, taking up the cross, or being holy. But his answer was dead on, and his answer convicted me. He said, believing in God is the most difficult thing to do for Christians. Believing in God is the most difficult thing to do for Christians. I recall a story about a small farming community that had been experiencing a terrible drought. They had no rain for three years. And the crops were dying in the fields and everyone was worried because this is how they made their living. The pastor of the local church called a special prayer meeting for all the people of the town to gather in front of the church and pray that God would send some rain. Many people arrived and you could sense the seriousness among the crowd. And as the pastor was getting ready to begin the prayer meeting, he noticed a young girl standing quietly in the front and she had a large colorful umbrella. The umbrella was a token of her faith. As he stared at the umbrella, he was a little ashamed because, because he did not bring one. Though the town had come together to pray for rain, no one else had thought about bringing an umbrella. Today's scripture passage is called, called the road to Emmaus. The road to Emmaus symbolizes the lack of faith, disappointment, and hopelessness. The road to Emmaus features two of Jesus' disciples, and they are Cleopas and an unnamed disciple. They are on their way home on the road to Emmaus, and they are disappointed, sad, and devastated because Jesus died. Even though they heard that Jesus had been raised from the dead, they don't believe it. When bad things happen to us, contrary to our expectations and prayers, sometimes we lose faith. We lose sight of God's presence, and we doubt God's promises. Life is not a, uh, uh, life is not a bed of roses. We're on the road to Emmaus right now. We are in, um, in the uncharted territory. I'm sure many people are asking these questions in their minds. Is God unfair? Is God silent? Is God hidden? Where is God when I'm suffering and dying? Why am I dying when most people are recovering? Why did my family have to die when most people have recovered from the coronavirus? How am I going to pay rent, utilities, and What will happen to the local economies? Will the virus come back in the fall? Will there be a vaccine by then? Things are not looking great. As far as the economy is concerned, as far as racism and hate crimes are concerned, things are not looking great right now. And we are on the road to Emmaus. We are faced with uncertainty, hopelessness, and helplessness. In today's scripture passage, Cleopas and the other disciple are on their way home to Emmaus. They are devastated, sad, and hopeless. Jesus appears and walks alongside them while they are talking and discussing together. But they don't recognize him because the Bible tells that um, they were kept from recognizing Jesus. And Jesus asks them, what are you guys talking about? And this seems like a therapeutic discourse. Jesus pretends he doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't know what they're talking about. And he says, what are you guys talking about? Jesus' question helps them name the bare bones of their struggle. 
And this is what therapists do. They generally don't give advice. They listen for what's already inside you. And Jesus does the same here. What are you guys talking about? Name the bare bones of your struggle. Why are you disappointed? Why are you sad? And why are you uh, 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 hopeless? And they name the bare bones of their struggle in verse 21. They are sad because we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. This is what they are saying. We had hoped that he was going to overthrow the Roman government and liberate us. We had hoped that he would give us a better life. We had hoped that he would restore our country, restore our national pride, and make Israel great again. Cleopas and the other disciple, disciple represent us in many ways. Sometimes we believe what we want to believe. We pick and choose um, what parts of the Bible uh, we want to hear. When bad things happen, contrary to our expectations and prayers, we get disappointed, we lose faith, and we lose sight of God's presence. And we question God's goodness. Is God unfair? Is God silent? And is God hidden? So Jesus uses the Old Testament and explains to them that the Messiah had to die and be resurrected from the dead. And this is what I invite you to do. We are on the road to Emmaus during this pandemic. I pray and hope that you encounter the risen Lord who walks alongside us during this time of crisis. In today's scripture passage, Cleopas and the other disciple experience something special when Jesus opens the scriptures to them. And this is what they say in verse 32. Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? Cleopas and the other disciple, they feel something special in their hearts when Jesus opens the scriptures to them. They feel their hearts burning within them. When bad things happen, contrary to our expectations and prayers, like Cleopas not expecting Jesus to die, those are times and when we are tempted to doubt his word, lose faith, and lose sight of God's presence. But not being able to see him does not mean that he is not walking with us. Those are not the times to neglect the word and prayer. Rather, we should pray and read the Bible until the peace of God overtakes our hearts. We should, we should be assertive and pray and read the Bible until the peace of God overtakes our hearts. Charles de Foucault also said, the one, the one thing we owe absolutely to God is never to be afraid of anything. The one thing we owe absolutely to God is never to be afraid of anything. If we truly believe in God, if we truly believe in the risen Lord, we should never lose hope and we should never doubt. And as soon as the two disciples, as soon as their eyes are open, they go back to Jerusalem. Uh, in verses 33 to 35, we read, And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven. And those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was, no he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. Cleopas and the other disciple are so happy to have encountered the risen Lord that they go back to Jerusalem. Jerusalem was seven miles from Emmaus, which meant about a three-hour walk. They just walked seven miles from Jerusalem. And out of joy, they walk another seven miles back to Jerusalem. They could have gone back to Jerusalem on, uh, the following day 
But out of joy, they walk another three to four hours in the dark to share the joy with the other disciples. This past Wednesday, uh, our youth group had a Zoom fellowship meeting. And one young lady said, I kind of really miss everyone. We miss having fellowship. We miss breaking our bread together. We want to see everyone's faces. And I pray and hope that that day will come soon. And just as the disciples share their encounter with the risen Lord, I look forward to seeing everyone sharing how they have encountered the risen Lord during this pandemic. And even though we are on the road to Emmaus, yes, we are concerned, we are worried, and things are not looking good right now. But Jesus is walking alongside us. And Jesus is the way. And he is our shepherd. And he is the light of the world. So he will shine the way for us. And he will continue to walk with us and lead and guide us. So I want to encourage you to encounter the risen Lord during this time of crisis. At this time, uh, let's pray together in light of uh, today's passage. Uh, First, how are you doing spiritually? Have you encountered the risen Lord walking alongside you during this pandemic? Or are you anxious? Are you worried or are you scared? Have you lost the sight of God, sight of God's presence? Or even are you too relaxed right now? Let's pray that we encounter the risen Lord who is walking with us during this pandemic. And let's also pray about uh, the coronavirus crisis. Let's continue to pray for those who are fighting on the front lines, those who are working uh, on the treatment and the vaccine and the leaders of our state and our country as they are shaping the national policies and guidelines. If, we, if you are worshiping with your family members, I want to invite you to uh, hold one another's hands. And if you are worshiping from home alone, uh, I invite you to place your right hand over your heart. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we come before you. We humble ourselves and come before you, Lord. Lord, because our faith is weak and vulnerable, sometimes we lose sight of you. We lose sight of your presence. We lose faith. Sometimes we doubt your word and your promises, your goodness, and your faithfulness. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, Holy Spirit, overtake our hearts with your peace. Overtake our hearts with faith. Overtake our hearts with hope. And Lord, though you are walking alongside us, sometimes we cannot feel your presence because of our lack of faith. Lord, we ask that you would fill our hearts with your peace, comfort, and hope so that we may continue to look to you, look to heaven, and seek your help. Lord, and we want to lift up those who are fighting on the front lines right now. Lord, we pray that you would surround them with your peace and continue to strengthen them, Lord. Renew their strength with them, Lord. Protect them, Lord, and keep them safe. And Lord, our governor and the many governors are looking to reopen the states. Lord, we ask for your wisdom upon them. Give them your wisdom as they are working on the guidelines, as they look to reopen the states. And Lord, we ask for your wisdom for those who are working on the vaccine and the treatment, Lord. Merciful God, 
as individuals and as a community, we come before you trusting your faithfulness and goodness. We pray for all who are affected and devastated by this pandemic. We pray that they may find relief and recovery. And we also pray for those who are guiding our state and nation at this time. We pray that they may make wise decisions. We pray for all the doctors, nurses, and medical researchers, and everyone fighting on the front lines, that through their skill and insights, many will be restored to health. And keep them and protect them, Lord, from this virus. And renew them, Lord. Renew their strength and surround them with your peace. And we pray for the vulnerable and the fearful, for the gravely ill and the dying, that they may know your comfort and peace. We also pray for those who are suffering, those who have lost their family members to this virus. Lord, we pray for their speedy recovery, and we pray that you will surround the victims, the, the people who have lost their family members. Lord, we pray that you will surround them with your supernatural peace and give them your peace and comfort and help them to get through this difficult time. Lord, have mercy on us. And help us not to lose track of you, Lord. Help us not to lose our faith. Be with us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Lord Jesus, we come and gather in this place of worship. This morning we'll lift up our praises to you and glorify you. We praise all things have done for us and glorify your mighty works. We long for the day we can see you face to face. Until that time, Lord, teach us to trust you and lead our ways and lives as you led the two disciples on the road of Emmaus. Enrich our life with your teaching and your ways. We invite Holy Spirit who sustain our life to guide us to see you in the midst of our lives. All that we have, we have of you, creator, preserver of mankind, accept these gifts which we now bring before you and help us to make the whole of life as an offering and every thought a prayer. We would seal this our worship in a renewed consecration of ourselves and our coming days to your service through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 교회 소식 말씀드리겠습니다. 생명의 삶 5월 허가 교육관 사무실에 있는 건물에 준비되어 있습니다. 금요일 토요일 주일 오전 10시에서 오후 3시 사이에 픽업해 주시면 감사하겠습니다. 푸드 도네이션 받습니다. 캔 푸드나 시리얼 푸드를 도네이션 해 주시면 최리엘 푸드 팬츄리에 전달하겠습니다. 드락 가능한 시간은 마찬가지로 금요일 토요일 주일 오전 10시에서 3시 사이입니다. 기타 자세한 내용은 교회 웹사이트에 있는 주보를 참조해 주시면 감사하겠습니다. For church news and announcements, please refer to the uploaded church bulletin on the church website. And uh, we're currently accepting um, canned foods, uh, dry foods that can be donated to Cherry Hill Food Pantry. So we're collecting them right now. And um, the church office is open on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. You may come to the church and drop them off. There is a drop-off box in the youth group building. Or if you don't feel comfortable coming out to the church, uh, we, we will be happy to uh, pick them up at your door. Uh, and also, uh, the new living life can be picked up in the youth group as well on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. The closing hymn is Because He Lives.
Let us bow our head. Go in peace, brothers and sisters and friends. May the fullness of his grace remain with you through the challenges of this week. May you pass on the grace you have received to those around you as you work and serve and rest. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.